All right, in this session, we're going to talk about the G3 counterclockwise arc. As you can see, I've drawn a 4 inch wide by 4 inch tall part. The corners have a radius inverse from our G2 example. So we're going to still be traveling around the part in a clockwise direction, but when we get to the radius, we'll be doing a counterclockwise radius, even though we'll still be clamp cutting while doing the radius. Okay, so the purple line, dashed line, is the center line of the toolpath. I always recommend that if your handwriting code, that you offset your geometry by the half the diameter of your tool so it is easier to find the intersection points of the endpoints of your toolpath okay so this is what the toolpath is going to look like uh, if i was to write this i usually start in the upper left hand corner you see i have a lead-in move away from the part i added a half inch and i am in line to cut my first leg so let's do it one segment at a time so here the end point again is beyond this leg at 750 from center. Uh, my edge of the tool is in line with the next piece of geometry. Okay, so the next move is just a short G1 line where I become tangent with the one inch radius. Now notice the radius is offset to the inside, if you will. And so the center line of the tool is actually swinging a smaller radius this time. Remember on the G2, when we were offsetting our tool path, the radius would actually be larger. In this case, the radius will actually be smaller. So we do a counterclockwise arc to the next tangent point, where we have a little bit of a straight section, getting in line with the next piece of geometry onto the next very short G1, then a G3, back to G1, 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 G3, G1, 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 G3, and a final G1 with an additional quarter inch lead out. So let's look at the program and see what our intersection points are and how we write the G3 code. All right, so here is the program, the way you would write this toolpath, starting on the upper left-hand corner of the part, as you've already seen in the previous illustration. But what I want to do is make sure that you understand how we arrive at the X and Y values. And this is where you really have to study your print, study your dimensions to the intersections, and then also realize that the true intersection point of the tool center is offset from that part geometry. Okay, so let's uh, go to the first intersection and we're going to talk about how we arrive at the X and Y value based on the dimensions of the print. Okay, so first of all, we know that the origin is in the center of the part. All right. So this first intersection point right here on the part is 750 away from origin. So in order for my tool to be in line with the next piece of geometry, I'm going to add a quarter inch to that 750 dimension. Okay, so currently I'm sitting at X one inch and then Y two inches 250. Why two inches 250? Look at the dimension right here. We have a two inch dimension from the center to the top line. We're offset quarter inch. So our first intersection point is at one inch Y two inches 250. So let's take a look at the program real quick. We started off at X minus one inch 750, Y two inches 250, which we currently sit at two inches 250 because all we did was a straight line. Then once we got into position at Z minus 0.5, our first move right here, G1 is already active because we activated it on our Z minus 0.5 move. So that's modal again. 
So the first thing we do, because we're already sitting at y 2 inches 250, we go to the x 1 inch. So that's where we're currently sitting. Then we're going to the next intersection point, which is a straight line move. Let's go ahead and complete that move. And right there, we're sitting at x 1 inch, y 1 inch 750. Okay, so in the program, all we have to do is mention y 1 inch 750, because on the previous line, we've already moved to x 1 inch. So y x 1 inch, y 750. So let's zoom in. So the top line is sitting at 2 inches. Okay, then we have a dimension of 750 from center line to where the radius ends. Now this radius is at one inch. So the center line of the radius is sitting one inch further from this 750 dimension. Okay. So the center line of the radius is one inch plus 750 making Y one inch 750 then we already know how we got to x1 inch. So that is how we arrive at x1 inch, y1 inch 750. So then let's complete the next move. We're going to do a counterclockwise arc. So right here, we're going to do a G3. Okay, G3, counterclockwise arc. Remember, we're offsetting to the inside. So the actual radius that the tool is swinging is one inch minus a quarter inch. So notice there's an R750. Okay. End point. Notice again we have this 750 dimension from origin plus the 250. So we arrive at Y one inch and the radius ends at one inch beyond this 750 dimension. Remember? The distance to the center line of the radius from this 750 dimension is one inch. So therefore, X ends in one inch 750. So therefore, we arrive at X one inch 750, Y one inch. Then we make our next move. And because that is a straight line move, and because we want to line up with the next piece of geometry going down, we have to add another quarter inch to our two inch dimension. So let me finish that move right there. So remember this leg sits at two inch. We have to go a quarter inch beyond that leg. So now we're sitting at X two inches 250. We already said that Y one inch. So in our code, we have to write G one because we're back to a straight line move to X two inches 250, a quarter inch beyond the two inch dimension of the part. I hope that's not confusing. Let me talk you through it. You may have to watch this a couple of times for it to sink in, then that's okay. I have to look at it two or three times myself when I handwrite stuff like that. So that's normal. All right, so let's move on to the next piece of geometry. So that's just a straight line move. So again, G1 is already active. So it's, there's no need to to write that on the next line, all we're doing is a Y move. And notice my dimension is one inch to this line, right? So we got to go a quarter inch beyond that line. So therefore, we go to Y minus one inch 250. Makes sense, right? All right, so then we got to get to this tangency point. So we're doing another G1 or straight line move until we're tangent with this next radius. So let's go ahead and complete that move. All right, so where are we sitting at that point? We're sitting at X one inch 750. And we already know we're sitting at Y minus one inch 250. So how do we end up with X one inch 750? Well, we know that the dimension to this line right here is one inch. The radius is 750. So the center point of the radius, and that's essentially where we are, is the tangency point of the start of that radius is 750 away from this one inch dimension. So therefore, the start of that radius 
we're sitting at x 1 inch 750 y minus 1 inch 250. Alright, so then we do a counterclockwise arc, so that will be a G3. So in our program, we are sitting right here at G3 with an endpoint of x 1 inch 250. Let's complete that move. Notice we're sitting up against the line that is 1 inch away from origin. Yeah, so 1 inch plus half the diameter, 1 inch 250. Then 1 inch 750. Notice this dimension is 1 inch. Okay, the radius is 750. So the center point after completing the radius, sitting at the tangent of that radius, it has moved 750 thousands in Y to arrive at Y minus 1 inch 750. Alright, so then we do another G1 move or straight line move. Let's complete that. And our tool is in line with the next piece of geometry. So the part overall height is 4 inch. We know that from center to the top is 2 inch. So we know that from center to the bottom line is 4 minus 2. So that's 2 inches plus half the diameter. So we're sitting at x 1 inch 250 y minus 2 inches 250. So then we move on to the next piece of geometry in line with the next g1 move. Notice this is 1 inch 250 plus a quarter inch so we're going to sit at minus 1 inch 500. All right, then we turn the corner right here and we are sitting at x minus one and a half, y minus one inch 750. So the one inch 750 in y comes from this minus one inch 250, that is to this piece of geometry right here at the top of that radius. The radius is a half inch. So again, center line of that radius, which is the tangency point where we are sitting right now, would be one inch 250 plus that half inch. Okay, so we make a G3 move, we we'll do a quarter turn, and so now we're sitting at x minus 1 inch 250 plus a half an inch. So therefore we're sitting at x minus 1 inch 750 y minus 1.5. So minus 1.5 is because y minus 1 inch 250 to this tangency point and then of course half the diameter of the tool. Next move. In line with the next piece of geometry which is sitting at minus 2 inches plus half the diameter of the tool. We're sitting at x minus 2 inches 250 and still y minus 1.5. G1 move. In line with the next piece of geometry right here which is sitting at 1 inch plus 0.250, so we're sitting at y 1 inch 250, x minus 2 inches 250. Then we go to the next tangency point, so that was a g1 move. So we're sitting at 1 inch plus 250, so that's y 1 inch 250. And then notice this 1 inch dimension, yeah, to this line. The radius is a half an inch. So we're sitting at x minus 1 inch 500. We do a g3 to the end point. Remember, we offset the radius to the inside. So therefore, we're sitting over here, x minus 1 inch 250, y 1.5, with a radius of 0.250. And then all we have left is one more move to complete the part shape. So we're back at x minus 1 inch 250, y 2 inches 250. Alright, so take a close look at the code right here. I'm going to go ahead and leave a copy of this on a PDF file with the shape and the program. Study it and then without looking at the program, see if you can write the code yourself. And then, of course, you have to program to double check yourself. And of course, you can enter these values in GWizard Editor and see your toolpath, and it will tell you 
or show you if you made a wrong move. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.